Hi, my name is Danielle Brennan and in this video I will be discussing growing compliant mechanisms from mycelial materials, which I developed with the help of my mentors Keen Chin and Dr. Carmel Majidi. For the Carnegie Mellon Robotics Institute Summer Scholars Program 2021. Throughout this video, I'll be introducing my seal materials and discussing how it was fabricated, the experimental aspect, and how we analyzed our findings. Our goal was to investigate the mechanical properties of the mycelial biocomposite to determine the possible uses for this material. Mycelial materials provide an alternative to fossil-based plastics and are completely biodegradable and renewable. To create the mycelium biocomposite, we first introduced the P. ostrichus mushroom culture to a suitable substrate, in this case, rye berries, to create grain spawn. Following this Let's tutorial, begin. start by cutting out your powder. cardboard molds in which we place the mycelium in substrate and allowed it to grow for seven days. This cardboard mold is lined with clear tape and sterilized using isopropyl alcohol to prevent contamination. After the seven days, the mycelium is in the shape of the mold and is ready to be baked and used. Seal your cardboard. Let's begin. Start by cutting out your pattern. Along with library, we also use two other substrates, sawdust and wood chips. After the seven-day growth period, we saw no mycelium growth on the sawdust or wood chip samples, but significant growth on the library sample. After the seven days, the library sample was baked at 200 degrees Fahrenheit and left to air dry for two days till it became a solid biocomposite foam. We also tried the flora cultivation method where you add flora and water to activate the mycelium and to add extra support to the mycelium block that is formed. This proved unsuccessful when our samples were contaminated with small insects, which we believe entered through the flora. So to avoid this, the flora could be sterilized using heat. We used two mechanical tests for the mycelium materials. We used a cantilever test and a simple living hinge test. This is our cantilever setup with our mycelium material. And these are the initial parameters that we used to conduct calculation. Unfortunately, our mycelium material broke after the first weight was added in our cantilever test, so we could not use our MATLAB analysis. When we used our MATLAB analysis script with our polystyrene example, we saw that the calculated elastic modulus was well within the range provided in the existing literature. Using the existing literature, we established a relationship between the deflection and the elastic modulus of the mycelial material and saw that the lower the elastic modulus, the higher the deflection would be with its natural weight and with added weight. The living hinge test was used to test the durability of our material and to determine the angle at which our material would break. From this test, we saw that our mycelial material broke at around 35 degrees. 
we were unable to run our mycelial material through the frame-by-frame -frame analysis script on MATLAB to determine the elastic modulus from the deflection, but from the previous literature and the physical properties that we have acquired during our experiments, we plan to run a finite element analysis on Fusion 360 to continue testing our materials and to determine the compliant mechanisms in which it can be used. I'd like to give a big thank you to my mentors, Keen Chin and Dr. Karma Majidi, and to the Robotic Institute Summer Scholars Program. 